name is Stephanie Burson, and I'm a practicum student with the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program. Today is November 17th, 2016, and I'm in the student union on the campus of Oklahoma State University to interview Carla Peden, owner of the Silver Clippers. Thank you for meeting with me today. It's nice to meet you too. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, so let's start off. Uh, where and when were you born? I was born here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. November the 1st, 1956, at the Stillwater Hospital, which is no longer at that location. They tore it down quite a few years ago when they built the new one. Mm -hmm. uh, and what do your parents do for a living? Both parents are deceased. Mm -hmm. My father worked for the U.S. Postal Service. He was a supervisor of maintenance. My mother was a housewife. And how long was your dad um, working for the Postal Service? Um, I believe 19... 1964 until I think um, like 19 maybe 84 oh, wow. something in that that area so um, and tell me about your family life I am the youngest of four children I have two older brothers and an older sister um, one older brother is deceased and I have the two remaining and um, they live in um, Owasso Oklahoma and Broken Arrow and do you have any memorable family traditions or family meals or any information about the house you grew up in? Of course, like, you know, the holidays were always wonderful. My mother's mother and father lived here in Stillwater, and they had a small acreage, so that was always fun during the holidays to go out there, and we could play out in their backyard, front yard, and all my cousins that were here. And um, my father's mother lived in Oklahoma City, and she had a small house, so... You know, it was quite cozy, so. Um, and then tell me about your education, starting with elementary school. Where did you go to school? I, all my siblings and I, went to Jefferson Grade School, which is now the Board of Education building here in Stillwater. It's on Main Street. That is actually the school I believe my father went to. My mother went to Lincoln School, which is now an um, alternative school, I believe, so. And they went to high school, and the high school was actually now part of the Stillwater Library. Um, and then tell me about your high school. When did you graduate? I graduated from Stillwater High, C.E. Donart. They changed it back to Stillwater High some years mm -hmm. later, but um, in 1975. And did you have any favorite subjects or teachers or things you like to do on the weekends? Um, in high school, I had like an English teacher I really liked. Her name was Mrs. Brown. We had, I had a vocal music teacher, um, Mr. Mason. He was wonderful, great with the children, great with the kids. So, um, and of course, high school is so different than, than, than grade school and stuff because we could leave and go eat somewhere if we wanted to. And, and my best memories are grade school. I love grade school. We had some great cooks, you know, and I still keep in touch with some of the kids I went to grade school with, so. Yeah, it's like, and when you're 60 years old, it's, you know, it's it's pretty neat to keep up with them and everything. They've got grandchildren now, and, and you know, so it's like, it's pretty nice. Well, that's nice. What made your elementary school experience so memorable? Um, you know, the kids, some of the teachers. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite teachers were actually the even grades, so the second, the fourth, and the sixth. So, um uh, Mrs. Anglin was my second grade teacher, Mrs. Mooney was my fourth grade teacher, and Mrs. Alexander, who later became, I think, a principal at one of the other grade schools um, when they shut down um, Jefferson. So it was an older school, and so uh, they tore the older part of the building down and kept the newer part in the auditorium. So. And then, so you were a, a hairdresser. Yes. Um, when did you know that you wanted to be a hairdresser? You know, I really didn't. I worked at Cat's department store down in Stillwater, and just one day my sister-in-law said, do you want to come and work for me? And so I said, okay, because I was going to get more hours, 40 hours a week. And so I actually came to work for her as a receptionist, you know, shampoo girl, and it, just all the little grunt jobs. And um, they had a program that... You could actually go to beauty school and learn it and get paid. So I came at the right time 
and uh, went to beauty school and graduated and um, been doing hair ever since. When did you graduate from beauty school? I graduated on Friday, October the 13th, 1978. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. It is funny. Um, and then what, what school did you go to? Um, it, it was Floyd Black's College of Cosmetology, and then they later changed it to, I think, Stillwater Beauty College. But it, it's actually on Main Street. It was on Main Street. It's no longer there. So mm -hmm. um, it's Sultan's now. So anyway, um, but that's where I went, and uh, it was predominantly girls. I think there was one guy. So. Um, and then what was your first job as a hairdresser? Did you just go back to work with your sister? To my, yeah, with my sister-in-law. She actually, you know, said, you will have a job when you graduate. Hmm. You know, so I actually um, went to work for her. So, and it was in the basement of the student union, <laughs> and which is actually down from my current location. Yeah. So we were down there, and then they were actually closing. She had three locations. She was closing one one location down. She just put a new location in and then she had this location. So she approached me about what I want to buy it. And mm -hmm. so I ended up buying it from her and uh, have been in the student union since. And this is from that location was moved upstairs and about oh five years ago we moved down to this location with the big the, the big remodel. Mm -hmm. So I've been down here ever since. Oh wow! So you got your own salon pretty much right out of beauty school, or was it actually? Um, it was like 1984. Mm -hmm. 1984. I graduated in '78, so oh, okay, it's a little bit of time. Is there? Um, so why did you decide on the name Silver Clippers? Is that I wanted to get a different name than what the previous owner had it as. So, and scissors or silver and I don't know how I came up with silver clippers. I know I didn't want to name it after myself so I was like I wanted something that you know was different from the previous name so and I just thought of that and it stuck. It's a good name. Thank you. Um, and then um, so what hours are you open, and then kind of what general prices do you have? Most usually um, 9.30 to 5.30, 9.30 to 6. Mm -hmm. um, Saturdays are by appointment only, um, and predominantly do men's haircuts. I do do women's haircuts and children's haircuts, so mm -hmm. um, perms, things like that. Okay. Um, and then what kind of prices do you have? I think they're very reasonable. Children are usually five dollars up, depending on how old they are, and um, women, uh, depending on if it's layers or if it's just a straight cut, just straight across. You know, it's cheaper. Uh, men's haircuts run fourteen to sixteen, so depending on if they get it shampooed. There's a happy hour, which is in between two and four, Monday through Friday, and men's haircuts are cheaper. Mm -hmm. Have the prices changed throughout the years? They changed. They, they <laughs> mine have not changed all that much. In fact, I've had several customers say, "When are you going to go up on your yeah. haircuts?" And women's haircuts in town here can really vary. Mm -hmm. You know, they can vary from ten dollars up to you know fifty, sixty, and depending on if they get their hair color. Um, you know, it it really varies. Men's haircuts. Yeah, if they go to an old time barber, it can be six, eight, ten dollars. So, I think that my hair, my men's haircuts are very reasonable. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, how have the products and styles changed? <laughs> the men's, <laughs> the the college girls, with being up here, the college girls, they are now just going with long hair, and you know they want basically cut just straight across. You know, nothing, you know, nothing fancy. Maybe a little angling in the front. The guys have gone with the um, what they call undercut, which mm -hmm. the sides and the back are shorter, and then they have the top longer. So that's the big fad right now with college guys. So, and I do older older gentlemen and older women, and older women still some of them still get perms. So, 
Is there a is there a particular decade that you kind of enjoyed the styles the most? The eighties were they were it was pretty um, fun with the girls because we used electric rollers in our hair, so we still had the big hair, you know, and and um, then the guys had the the longer hair, you know, and, but um, I, I like the hairstyles now. I mean, with the girls just having the longer hair because they can braid it and ponytail it and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and and the guys, you know, they want it a little bit longer on top and and shorter, so that's kind of fun using mm -hmm. clippers and scissors. So, uh, so you know, being a hairdresser, you're on your feet all day. Uh, does that get very tiring? Is it difficult on your body at all? It does, and I, my brother actually was talking to a little girl one day at a restaurant, and she was working that job plus going to, to beauty mm -hmm. school, and he said, well, my sister would tell you, because she tells me, you must wear comfortable shoes. He said, that is just a good, good, a really good mat, but he said, wear comfortable shoes. He said, fashion is not the thing, and when you when you do hair and and um, I think like weight has a lot to do with it I, and um, but yes the the feet the ankles the knees mm -hmm. the backs you know so women get carpal tunnel because of their you know wrist movement and things mm -hmm. like that so anyway it it can be a difficult job yeah that was the ankle Uh, is there something that you like to do to relax and unwind? <laughs> I like to walk my dog, Aww. and I'm a couch potato too. But we really like to, we like to walk. She likes mm -hmm. to, to, you know, just walk and just walk and walk. And um, it's great. It's a, it's a great stress reliever just to enjoy a nice walk when the weather's good and everything. And uh, I like to watch. TV. I like to sit on the couch and just enjoy TV. And then I fall asleep. Do you have a favorite TV show? Something that you watch the most? Oh, I used to love to watch Cops. I, lo yeah. I like to watch those kind of shows like 48 Hours, you know, and uh, Dateline. Things like that. And I also like Big Bang Theory, Mom, you know, shows like that. Mm -hmm. So, there's some I'm just I'm stuck on. <laughs> um, now you have been your own boss for a while. Yes. Uh, how has that been? How is that like? Or what's that like? You know, I really do like it, and I have no employees, mm -hmm. so um, I I like it. I mean, and I hate to say it, but you know, sometimes there are things that happen, and but with that, you just have to put a note on the door, you know, saying that mm -hmm. you you have to go do this or whatever, and. Um, so, uh, but I do, and most people are pretty understanding, but um, I like being my own boss, and I, I you know, it, it's a small area, so mm -hmm. it's, um, I kind of like being, being by myself. I'm never alone, right. so there's always somebody coming in, so. Um, but you do have more than one chair here, so have you ever worked with other people? Yes. Um, when my shop was upstairs, I had three other, uh, two other people, sorry, two other people, and I believe in having one chair for each person. I don't want two people to have to mm -hmm. try and share. So at one point in time, I did have employees. So, and um, it, you know, it's just a you know, it was a different time and everything. Um, but being down here, it is very cozy. So mm -hmm. I find that I like just working by myself down here. Right. And when you first started, was there a learning curve at all with managing books and advertising? You know, word of mouth mm -hmm. is the best advertising. And, um, you know, you have somebody that keeps your books for you, you mm -hmm. know, and he'll say, like, well, you know, maybe you're spending too much on advertising or, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. But it, it definitely, coming from not knowing how to do anything like that, it is a, it is a learning experience. Mm -hmm. I worked at a department store for, like, two and a half years, so that was, like, the only education I had was, you know, doing inventory and, and selling and stuff like that. But one-on-one, -on -one, um, cutting people's hair is, is different because you want to make them happy. Mm -hmm. You want them to come back. You want them to like you. So. 
Um, so why have a shop in the in the student union? Why, you know, it was almost thrown in my lap because mm -hmm. having a sister-in-law and brother who had the business in the union, it was like, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. It's a win-win situation. I, I, I love it. The kids keep me young. You know, and kids are fun. And you learn from them, they learn from you. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, you talk to kids and you go, you know, you need to take care of yourself. You need to eat right. You know, you need to take some time for yourself. You know, go for a run, go for a walk, you know. Go hang out with your friends, you know. But, you know, you need to, you need to enjoy going to school mm -hmm. because it's over with before you know it. Um, and you mentioned your salon being in different locations in the student union. Yes. Uh, is there pros and cons to each of the places that you were at? The first location was kind of like, because they had to put um, walls for fire reasons, um, so when you came out the doorway, you really didn't know where my location was. And so that one was not a, a good location. The one upstairs I loved because it was right next to the doors to go outside. Mm -hmm. So I got to see outside, I got to see, you know, Theta Pond, you know, it was, a, it was a great location. I liked it, I miss it, but I like this location too. And I don't know why, I, I, I really do like this, this location, mm -hmm. tornado season. <laughs> well, are there any other reasons that you like it down here? You know, people, I mean, people are always coming by. They're always walking by um, because people can eat down here and everything. But I like it. It's never really all that quiet except for maybe closer to the evening. But I like it down here. Right. If you could choose to go back upstairs, would you? No. No, because, no, I mean, there's things that happen. I mean, you know, there's people that come down here, and, and there's always something in the cowboy underground going on. So, I mean, there's like the blood drive. There's always something going on down here. So it's it's a good it's a good location. I do like it. Um so the student union has changed a lot. Yes. Uh so what can you tell me about some of the old things that used to be here, like the bowling alley and the candy store? We had a bowling alley with I can't tell you maybe about eight lanes. I can't tell you it, how long or how many but and there was arcade games there was pool tables mm -hmm. and it was it was a lot of fun I spent a lot of quarters on those video games <laughs> and um, we had um, we had a jewelry store they sold classrooms mm -hmm. there plus they had jewelry mm -hmm. diamond rings and things like that and then fraternity and sorority um, jewelry mm -hmm. and we had a candy store. She sold Russell Stover chocolates and the stick candy, mm -hmm. different flavors. And they had toys. They had teddy bears, all sorts of toys. And they had um, matchbox cars for boys. And they had little just OSU things. Um, at one time, there was a women's shoe, shoe store. There was a little place that was... Um, they had needle, like needlepoint. Um, they had um, a record store. They had um, a video, like where you could rent videos, like a blockbuster. Yeah. Only I can't remember if it was or not. Um, you know, we had Mr. G's, which Mr. Glass was a well-loved person. He always had candy for kids and everything but he had a clothing store that was predominantly men's but they had t-shirts and things like that there was Bonnie's which was a women's clothing store um, at one time there was just a little room that had like maybe not candles but just little knick-knack things mm -hmm. there's Cecil's Cecil's had greeting cards they had um, gift bags they had candy. They had, if you needed some shampoo, you could run in there. She had leather goods. It was a neat little sun dry, they call it sun dries, mm -hmm. little um, store. It was really neat, and Mrs. Cockleyser was such a sweet lady. Such a sweet lady. So, miss her. 
um, they had, they had, back in the day, they had records. Um, <laughs> there was another record store, but um, there was a CD warehouse. So, you know, we've had several things in here. Mm -hmm. We had escalators coming from the first floor to the fourth floor, but they took those out because they were just too expensive to overhaul. And, um, oh yes, the, the renovation, uh, this one was the extreme one. And, I, you know, I like it. I mean, um, the variety, there's such a variety of foods on the first floor now. Mm -hmm. And um, the ballroom, I think they've remodeled it, but, you know, it still has its, it's still a beautiful room. Mm -hmm. So, and they just got through remodeling the Atherton Hope hotel so yes I've seen some some changes in this building so but I do like it now mm -hmm. I do like it so was it difficult to work during all of those renovations well I was actually my shop was on the first floor and it was basically untouched I mean just that end was untouched um, but they had closed off the rest of the the first floor and so we uh it was my shop and the barber shop and and so they basically just it was just us you know mm -hmm. and and um so um and we had a post office we still we had a post office here too so but it, it was it was strange you know and then like when we got to move down here and we had like one day to move in before class started so it's just like woo <laughs> so but you know we got moved in and everything mm -hmm. so but the thing about having a larger room going to a smaller room, you have to get rid of some things. So, but um, yeah, that renovation was huge. So, um, the second floor, and then they've added on, they've added, you know, they added the atrium quite a few years ago, and then they added the new part on the second floor. So, that's been recent. So. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned a lot of businesses that are no longer here. Do you know why some of them left? Um, for Mr. G, it was he was getting older, and Cecil's, you know, with the renovation, I think that some of the places just, you know, and the people that own Cecil's were getting older, you know, when your kids don't want to take over the business. And and um, I think uh, the Clash Rings, it was... Um, Maybe the alumni building took over the ordering of the class rings and stuff and the jewelry store that was a huge part of their business was class mm -hmm. rings so and the candy store lady I think you know they just were getting older so and you know probably time to retire and enjoy life uh, and then there has been a lot of you know different administrations um, so have, have different administrations that you've worked under, have, has it affected your working here? It hasn't. It yeah. hasn't, although I think, I mean, Hargis is just, President Hargis is a wonderful man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I he's such a, a people person. So, um, you know, you say hi to him and he'll say hi back. He may not know you, but he'll say hi <laughs> back and has a smile on his face. So mm -hmm. I, I think they're an incredible couple and they really add to the university. Good. Um, now students, now do students use the student union the same way now that they used to or do they use it differently? Yeah, I think there's, um, we probably do meet here and I know they do study, you know, they'll have their little groups and study, you know, at tables and stuff like that and, and um, they will cluster down to eat for lunch and stuff so I mean I think it is um, used more than it, it has in earlier years that I was here so and our director Mitch Gil Kil Kilcrease, Kilcrease um, really made it to where it's very open for the kids to come and and study and visit and he's made it very very welcoming so it's a good place to meet and that was his plan was I think it was to, for people to come and and gather and have you know a good time and what would you say are some of the big pros and cons of working at the university or just at the student union in general 
still, the university is like its own little town. Yeah. I mean, so you get to know all the people, you know, and if you don't know them by name, you'll, you know, them by face. And um, it's just like its own, to me, it's almost like its own little community. So, I, I mean, I love it up here. I just, I can't imagine having a business not on campus. So, I just, I can't, I just can't imagine not, you know, yeah. I mean, I've been up here so long, you know, it's like. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you don't like? It's all pretty positive. It's all pretty darn positive. You know, uh, parking, I think parking is a huge situation up here, but as with any campus, that's probably going to be a problem. But um, when you live close enough as I do, you walk. So mm -hmm. I have no problem with that. So so you would recommend working here to others? Oh, yes. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a great place. You know, the people are very caring. You know, so, mm -hmm. oh, yes. Uh, and then what can you tell me about how student attitudes and study habits have changed over the decades, or have they? You know, I, I don't, I mean, I know that they come up here for an education. I know that they want to have a little bit of fun. But, um, you know, I think, I mean, a lot of kids, I, I know especially with international students, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of them don't have a lot of money. They are up here to get an education, get out go to work, maybe work here for a little bit, and then go home. Mm -hmm. So I've found that with a lot of um, international students. They maybe want to work here for a couple of years, and then they want to go home. So it's right. like, so. But, um, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I think it's always been about the same, you know. I mean, you know, you know that you're up here for education. Right. With a little bit of fun. What do you think makes OSU so special? The people. Yeah. The people. They're they're the best. Um, we've overcame a lot of tragedies mm -hmm. as a college, and people just gather. They get. I mean, they're there for one another. So mm -hmm. that's the people are the best up here. They really are caring. Very very caring people. So. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say that, actually. Oh, yeah. That's usually and, everyone's answer. <laughs> and, people, and people, when people come to visit the campus, mm -hmm. they go, like, the people here are so nice, and they're willing to help you find something, find a building, you know, find some place to eat, you know. It, it's, you know, suggest places they like to eat, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, the people here are really extremely nice people, good people, mm -hmm. so... Is it uh, like that? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, and I, I find that people from different states say, like, the people here in, in Oklahoma are so nice. Mm -hmm. Or the people here in Stillwater are so nice. Yeah, so it's Stillwater as well. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, now, I noticed you have a candy bowl. Yes. Uh, so is, what's what's that about? Do you have a story behind that? Um, I like candy, so. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. But now, I have a periodontist, and he has candy, and his candy, he has a candy dish. So, I like candy, and mm -hmm. I think candy makes people happy, yeah. and they're always happy to, like, see what's in the candy dish. You know, they want good candy, too. <laughs> candy. You got you to gotta get the good stuff. got to get the good stuff, not the cheap stuff. Yeah. What what kind of candy is usually in there? Um, and when it starts getting cooler, there's chocolate. Mm -hmm. And in the summer, it's like Starburst and... And uh, Smarties, yeah. things like that. But in, uh, during the holidays, you know, starting around, you know, Halloween on, chocolate. So, mm -hmm. and I do you like some good chocolate? Do you? So. <laughs> do you ever put like peppermints in there for Christmas? Um, actually, I have some peppermints over here. <laughs> so yes. So you are stocked <laughs> up. <laughs> now I don't have candy canes. I don't ever carry yeah. candy canes, but. Is there a reason for that? But. I like those little puff, the puff peppermints, yeah. you know, that are soft. <laughs> uh, now, you mentioned that your clients are mostly men, um, but what about ages? Do you see, like, a certain age? Do you see you know, mostly students? Or? You know, um, it's mostly, like, 18 to, like, 24 for guys, but then mm -hmm. I do have some older um, gentlemen that are, you know, professors or, mm -hmm. you know, work on the campus, and they come because... Location is great, mm -hmm. convenient. You know, they they come here, 
and maybe they'll eat before they come and get their hair cut, get their hair cut, and go eat afterwards, grab something, take it back to work, so yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, has your clientele changed over the years? No, it's, I mean, it's, you know, it's always, you know, I mean, men, women, you know, maybe some children, you know, along the way, so. Mm -hmm. And then those children grow up and then they go to college. <laughs> see you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you see a lot of international students? Yes. Oh, yes. You know, um, you know, a lot from like Japan or and China and um, you know um, South Korea. You know, or um, Tai you know from Taiwan and whatever. Um, uh, and a lot from India. A mm -hmm. lot from India. So yes, and it's so neat. It's not. It's nice. To talk to students about their country, and I get mm -hmm. to learn some stuff from them about their country, mm -hmm. their people, their culture. So it's really it's nice. It's mm -hmm. you know it's nice to find out about their families, things like that. Mm -hmm. Do the international students ask for the same types of haircuts as the other students? Um, there a lot of them are more conservative. Mm -hmm. um, you know they want maybe like scissors just used everywhere. I think they're a little afraid they don't want to go extremely short. So they're more conservative, mm -hmm. I have found. So and the one good thing is about you can go shorter. If you go too short, you can't put it back on. <laughs> um, have you had any really memorable customers? Yes. Um, Anson Williams, who was Potsy on a TV show called Happy Days. <laughs> he, he came in, they were filming a movie here, and oh. he came in and wanted to get his hair cut, and um, so it was very, to me I call it a low budget film, but anyway, <laughs> they came in and I cut his hair, and yes, I did save his hair. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do that. Okay, um, yeah. Tim Dubois, mm -hmm. he's a country music uh, record producer. Um, he was here for an award. He received a, an award and so he was here and his wife came in and uh, one of my employees at the time did her hair and she goes, well my husband needs a haircut. So he mm -hmm. came in and and I was like, oh yes, you know, I had heard of him so it was, it was, that was exciting too. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I never did cut Garth's hair so, um, you know, it's like I'm sure I probably saw him in the hallways and didn't even, you know, you never realize it's right. He's gonna be famous, so <laughs> maybe one day he'll come back. He <laughs> <laughs> <Do> his hair. <laughs> <laughs> and do people usually share personal stories with you? Oh answer? yes, yes. You know, um, some some kids sometimes they may have to go home. There's mm -hmm. like maybe a death in the family, or um, you know, now we're getting ready for Thanksgiving. And a lot of kids are going home, so it's going to be neat when they come back and and tell me what they you know they what they did for Thanksgiving. I uh, I had a student today say, well, it was him and his parents and his siblings and his grandfather on one side and his grandmother on the other. And I said, well, is there a love connection there? And he said, no. But I thought that was I thought that was really neat mm -hmm. that actually had the grandfather and the grandmother mm -hmm. living under one roof. Uh -huh. But it's it's neat to hear, you know, kids. I had a girl a while ago and, you know, she she's going to go home this week and then she has to come back for Monday and Tuesday and then she's going to go home again. And, you know, so excited to see her mom, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody's, you know, happy to see their grandparents and everything. So, now, and kids, you know, it's like I can't stress to them enough that they need to see their grandparents mm -hmm. so um, it, to me it's it's important so mm -hmm. and then have you had any like major problems with like bad perms or the wrong color or being cut too short you know um, I really don't like to do color no. so I don't have to worry about that mm -hmm. um, and it, you know there's always I always try and make sure I understand and that's mm -hmm. why I always cut longer because you can cut shorter mm -hmm. so I always try and stay try to do it longer 
uh, cut longer and so we can make sure that um, I'm understanding it correctly. Mm -hmm. And perms, you know, there's just not that many women that get perms yeah. done now. Yeah. So, and of course with perms, the smell is just horrendous. <laughs> so, and I don't really do that many anymore. But, you know, you always want to make sure that you understand about the right, like if you, they want body or if they want curly. Mm -hmm. So you always want to make sure you understand what they want. Because right. you don't want to make them too curly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, how have the popular hairstyles changed over the years? You mentioned a little bit with the 80s. Oh, yes. You know, I mean, because back in like in the 80s, we the girls curled their hair with electric rollers. So, you know, the electric rollers were always going, you know. And, and you know, the hair would be layered. Mm -hmm. And um, if you could get the roller around the hair on the top, then... You know, and, you know, we feathered it back like, you know, it was curlier than like Vera Fawcett. But it was it was curlier, but it was, you know, it yeah. definitely looked like we spent some time, you know. So, I mean, it was like nothing on a date night to sit there and, you know, plug in the electric rollers and curl, you know, the hair and hairspray. So, hairspray, I have really over the years, it's been less and less hairspray, which is, mm -hmm. you know, the girls are going more natural, mm -hmm. you know, um, I think they like the shampoos that are not as harsh. You know, they don't have um, harsh ingredients, mm -hmm. more natural. Um, but yeah, it's like hairspray, yeah. <laughs> it's almost a thing of the past. It is, yeah. It is. We, um, our station when it was big, and uh, the, you have to understand that mm -hmm. the shop was big. Yeah. It was like probably 12 stylist chairs. We had dryer chairs, and there was probably like 11 of those. We had um, a waiting area. We had, um, you know, we had uh, the, the shampoo bowls at the stations, and there was, like I said, there was probably about 12 of those. Yeah, wow. We had a break room. We had a room where we had all the supplies. So, um, you know, it was, it, it was different. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, because each girl had a station, and it was, it was bustling. You know, I mean, when you have twelve hairstylists, you know, and it was it was busy back then. So everybody getting their women getting their hair teased, <laughs> teased. Oh yes. And was this at your sister's salon or at yours? And my yeah, my sister in law's. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. it was hers before you know I bought it. And yes, we had we went from a really large shop to downsizing which mm -hmm. and that and that was really nice so yeah. to like from probably like 12 stations to like four so yes mm -hmm. uh, now what kind of like products and brands do you use now um, Paul Mitchell predominantly mm -hmm. uh, the men really and women like the tea tree because it mm -hmm. smells and it's very it smells great and it's very invigorating mm -hmm. and they like that so but mostly Paul Mitchell mm -hmm. so what about styling products Paul Mitchell Paul Mitchell <laughs> uh, Moroccan oil mm -hmm. is um, a very popular product with the women nowadays, mm -hmm. you know, for their hair and it makes their hair feel soft and smells good. So they like the Moroccan oil products too. Mm -hmm. There's so many product lines now. There are. It's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's like, there's so many. I mean, it seems like when I was growing up, you had Willa Bals Balsam and you had like Prell and you had Pert. There really weren't that head and shoulders. There weren't mm -hmm. a whole lot of products, it seemed like. But now, you know, you've got a lot of products to choose from. Mm -hmm. Have you kept up with it all? Um, you know, there's there's hair books that have, you know, and, you know, it's not just hairspray. It's not just gel. You know, you've got your sea salt or your sea, <laughs> you know, spray and to make your waves, you know, soft and and but there's just so many styling products out there. There's not just shampoo, gel, conditioner, mm -hmm. hairspray. I mean, you've got everything out there now. So um, hair magazines will introduce a lot of the new products that are coming out. Mm -hmm. So is there a particular like type of or I guess company of magazine or name of mag? I don't know how they work. Like modern modern salon yeah. is one that I get so and they'll have hairstyles in there too and mm -hmm. uh, they're a little too mm, trendy for Stillwater. Stillwater's <laughs> conservative, you know. So, so I mean, uh, you know, the girls here they like to you know wear their hair down. 
mm -hmm. put up in a ponytail, braided. Yeah, so, yeah, so. It's like, and some of them, you still see some of them on campus with their hair like pink mm -hmm. or green or something like that. Yeah. But, but yeah, so. Is there a style that you like to do the most? No, not really. Not really. I mean, and with men, I mean, it is fun using clippers mm -hmm. and scissors both. So okay. you get the, you know, the best of both, so. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've lived in Stillwater your whole life. Yes. Um, how, and, and your parents did as well. How many generations have been here? Um, my mother's father came over from Arkansas. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't really tell you about her mother. Um, my father's father at one time had a grocery store downtown, but apparently it didn't last very long mm -hmm. because he let fraternities and sororities charge. So I, I've not seen any pictures of the grocery store, so I don't really know how long it was even there. Mm -hmm. But um, my mom's mom and dad had a house on Jardo. When the girls started getting, you know, of school age, they moved into a house on Lowry Street, and it's still there. Both houses mm -hmm. are still there. So, um, in fact, my aunt was talking about my mom was one of five girls, and they had their bedroom upstairs. And when it got really cold, they would heat bricks up to keep their feet warm. Oh, wow. Yes. So, and they were talking oh. about. Um, my grandmother had a storm cellar, and they would she would can a lot of vegetables mm -hmm. and fruits and stuff like that. My grandmother was an excellent cook, oh. so she um, and my mom excellent cook too. So but my mom was one of five girls, so um, you know it's just you know with hand me downs, you know there was always dresses. So um, but her mom was an excellent cook. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was a carpenter by trade, so he always walked around with no overhaul overalls. Yeah. So but good people. Mm -hmm. And I think my grandmother maybe didn't even graduate from high school, mm -hmm. but she read. Mm -hmm. So and she wonderful, wonderful lady. And so did my grandfather. Um and my dad's parents, um she, um, my grandmother eventually moved to Ponca and uh, remarried after my grandfather passed away. But anyway, um, so she lived in Ponca in Oklahoma City. My father was, his father was married three times. So it was like two from the first, one from the second, and then two from the third. So, and our house is very small. It's more like a two bedroom mm -hmm. and living room, dining room together. and. I don't know how people, I mean, they may do with how they lived. Mm -hmm. You know, not every child had a bedroom. They had one bathroom. Um, you know, and, so, and that's just the way it was, you know, so. Mm -hmm. I still live in my childhood home, so. Yeah. And that's, it's it's neat. You know, I, I can't imagine living anywhere else, but, you know, it's home, mm -hmm. so. Uh, how long is, has your family had the house? I believe my parents, my grandparents rented it, I believe. My parents eventually bought it when they got, after they were married. So it's been 1946, 45, 46, something like that. Wow. So, yeah. A long time. We, in fact, there's pictures and there are no fences mm -hmm. around everybody's houses. So... You know, it's 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 pretty wild. Mm -hmm. There's a picture the apartment next door. There's not an apartment there. It's just mm -hmm. there's just a feel like they could plant vegetables and stuff. Yeah. But no fences back then. Really? It was just yeah. You know, and um, the lady um, on Husband Street had a uh, boarding house at one time. I guess yeah, a boarding house. So mm -hmm. anyway, we had a rock house. Um, down on the next block and it was just a neat you know it's just it was neat growing up mm -hmm. um so how has it changed it's changed a lot oh my goodness yes <laughs> i mean oh my goodness it's like um there's a church down um close to me and they had duplexes 
behind it and they took they moved those out or tore them down and they started taking houses out and started doing apartments and I have a huge apartment building around me now mm -hmm. and parking garage and you know it you sit there and think gosh it used to be so quiet now it's just like so it's so loud mm -hmm. and they're just building more and more apartment buildings and my fear is like are they going to have enough students to fill them mm -hmm. and um Oh, Stillwater has changed. It has changed. When I was um, a child, we had a, um, they had like a little apartment building, and as a husband and wife, and they had a little room, and they had candy bars, and they had the pop machine where you put the coin in, and you'd find your soda pop you wanted, and you'd drag it through, and then pull it up like that. And uh, it was great. I mean, those are the kind of childhood that I mean. I wish, you know, kids nowadays are into computers mm -hmm. and the video games and, you know, we go outside and play, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, TV was black and white, you know, so, you know, um, records were, they were called mono, mm -hmm. you know, and we had 45s, we had albums, you know, it was nothing to, my cousins had like a little record player and we'd go in my grandparents' bedroom and we'd put music on and dance. You know, if it was cold outside, and, you know, those are those are the things you remember. Right. And I remember the going over and getting a soda pop or a candy bar, because that wasn't an ever it wasn't an everyday occurrence. Mm -hmm. You know, you just if your mom had an extra quarter or something like that, and that's another thing is you know of course candy bars were so cheap back then. We had a place. Um, it was called Sandy's. Mm -hmm. And you could get a hamburger for ten cents, a cheeseburger for fifteen, and a malt or a shake. I'm sorry for twenty five cents. Oh, wow. And then George Washington's birthday, they would have cherry pies. Oh, <laughs> oh great. it's just, you know, it's Stillwater has really changed. There was a mm -hmm. um, enclosed mall across the street from the high school mm -hmm. uh, when I was younger, and they had a grocery store. I think at Ace Hardware they had a fabric store, a beauty shop, barber shop, record store. Uh, pet store, and um, you know they the uh, grocery store there would have once I think once a year they'd have ham and cheese sandwiches that were like twenty cents. Oh wow! Yeah, you know, one piece of ham, one piece of cheese. Yeah, twenty cents. <laughs> I think nowadays they sell them for like four dollars. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are some of the major changes that you saw? Oh my gosh. Um, you know, we really, I didn't feel like growing up, of course, we couldn't really afford to eat out, but mm -hmm. I really feel like we really didn't have that many eating places. We had like, we had an A&W, mm -hmm. you know, we had this place called Latigo's. It was a um, barbecue place. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, I mean, you know, McDonald's didn't come to, you know, to Stillwater until, gosh, I don't know if I was in high school, junior high, high school. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you don't really have money, you know, you don't eat out like that. So, but we had a Dairy Queen on um, the corner of Main and uh, um, Miller Street, you know, so, and we had Sonic, we we had the first Sonic name um, here in Stillwater. So the location is still there, mm -hmm. but they've, they've torn down, of course, the original Sonic, but mm -hmm. we still have the original sign, so. Um, like I said, A W root beer, um, Lindy's. We had a sirloin corral when I was in high school, but you know, um, definitely more eating places now. Yeah. And the still Stillwater has really expanded. My grandfather, back in the late '60s, said that Perkins Road would eventually build up, and it finally, it eventually really did. And Perkins Road, as you well know, is one of the major hubs. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like. So he, but he said, back in the sixties, he said Perkins Road will build up someday, and it, boy, it did. So um, you know, it's so weird. You go, to, you can go to Brahms now and get milk. When I grew up, we went to like there were dairy farms, and mm -hmm. we would go get our milk, and uh, you pick it up. And um, Parkview Estates is a housing addition, mm -hmm. and that used to be a dairy farm. We would go out there and pick up four gallons of milk. My mom would take the cream. Mm -hmm make butter so you know it's just it's things like that you yeah. remember you yeah, know we had tennis courts um where the architecture building is anyway we had 
tennis courts there. You know, as kids, we'd go up there and, you know, play tennis. They had a backboard. You'd sit there and hit the, you know, tennis balls on the backboard, you know, mm -hmm. so it was free. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you feel about still water now? That it's, it's so big. It's really growing. I mean, yeah. it's really growing. Um, I wish we had a target. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that everybody still wishes we had a target. Um, everybody's excited about the sprouts. Mm -hmm. But um, it really has grown. And, you know, you get people who graduated and they come back five years and they're like, still is really growing. Yeah. It's like, yes, it is. And they're tearing down old houses, taking mm -hmm. them out, building new apartments and, and everything. But it is growing. But I find places like um, Owasso, Broken Arrow, mm -hmm. Edmond, you know, they're all really growing. Right. So, I mean, Stillwater is growing not as fast as as some places, but, you know, mm -hmm. hopefully we'll keep that college town atmosphere, too. Right, right. When did you notice that Stillwater started getting really big? Was there, like, an event or a decade that it just started getting huge? Yeah, it seemed like the last 15, 20 years. I mean, it really started, you know, and really, to tell you the truth, like, the last five years. Yeah. Because that's when all these apartment buildings have started going in. Mm -hmm. And um, at the I think Brian Place, yeah, about like the last four or five years with the apartment buildings coming in, it really has, you know, it's just like, you know, just like, wow. So it's like, I didn't know that housing addition was there, you know, yeah. and so, but yeah, the, the apartment buildings, you get, has really, has really, so I'm going to say the last five years yeah. definitely has grown. So, and I know you want to target. Is there anything else you'd like to see in Stillwater? Well, we're close to interstate, but Cracker Barrel. I love an Outback. I mean, apparently, I like food, but Outback, Outback. But I do like Texas Roadhouse. But I mean, Target. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Um, yeah. But that's about it. I mean, really, a Target more than anything, and everybody does. Yeah. You know, whether they'll ever come in, I don't know. Um. And I suspect, you know, Stillwater's going to grow more, you know, and 6th Street is, it's it's showing because all the car dealerships moved out that way, and mm -hmm. and we have that Walmart, so, you know, I think 6th Street is just, is definitely going to be, the west part of 6th Street is really going to be exploding mm -hmm. with more apartments. It's never enough apartments. It's really. never, yes. <laughs> And then how's the university changed? More buildings. Yeah. You know, they of course, they tear down old ones and um, build new ones. Gall I mean, like, well, Gallagher Iba has expanded, but they had to pretty much, you know, they had to go up and, you know, out a little bit. But the stadium is just, you know, top notch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got a beautiful stadium. You know, it's, it's just, it's pretty. It's like better than OU's. <laughs> but um you know in the you know buildings older buildings tear them down mm -hmm. you know and, and uh put new ones there you know so you know it's um and of course you know they may end up well they still have north of the campus here mm -hmm. so they can always go that way so were you sad to see any of the buildings go Yeah, yes. I mean, yeah, because, you know, growing up, you, I've, you know, I've always just, you know, seen them. They've always been there, and then, like, mm -hmm. they're they're gone, you know, so. Um, and as long as they make them the Georgian, you know, I, I do like that architecture. I like our, the color of our bricks. Mm -hmm. So, um, Cordell, I don't know how much longer it'll be up, but in some buildings, it's like you just... Uh, admire them from outside and you, know, you never go in right. so um, I was the high rises were getting old the elevators were getting older um, and you hate to see high rises you know come down but you know it's um, you know the the years show on them you know on the buildings and stuff like that so mm -hmm. what's the biggest change that you've seen to the university well, I guess them taking down the high rise, the one set of mm -hmm. high rises, and they don't make buildings like that anymore. Yeah. They were well made, but um, and you know we have 
the um, help me the common center the common okay. center <laughs> is just a beautiful facility mm -hmm. and my sister is like well I wish they would have had that when I was in college yeah. so I mean they tend to really improve on things the student union you know has improved the hotel has improved mm -hmm. um, you know we've got you know, our, we still have our old building, um, old central, you know, and, and they renovated it. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, the alumni, alumni building is gorgeous, so the yeah. foundation. So we've got some really, we do have some really pretty new buildings, so. It's always sad to see old ones go down. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, now, I understand you actually just learned how to drive a couple years ago. Yes. Uh, Yes. What can you tell me about that? What was that like? <laughs> well, I took driver's ed in high school, yeah. and um, I tend to have a problem, I think, taking a written test, and mm -hmm. I just never could even get past the permit. And having a, a father who was not big on the women driving in the family, my mom didn't ever drive. Her mother drove, though. So, and then my sister, when she got married, she pretty much got hers after she got married, mm -hmm. and. Um, so, um, with the death of my brother, I got his car, so that meant I had to learn, and um, I, I learned from a wonderful lady that has a driving school in town, and a wonderful lady, and um, Ed, it's really, it's amazing, it's like, I'm just going to hop in the car and go to Walmart, yeah. I'm going to hop in the car and get something to eat, and you don't have to sit there and think, it's going to take me 30 minutes to go there and get food and bring it back. You know, now you hop in the car and you're back home in, you know, five, ten minutes, you know. So, it's just really, just, um, it's incredible. You know, it's just like, you know, get in my little car and and just uh, my dog. She sometimes is in the passenger seat and we'll just <laughs> hop in the car <laughs> and go get her dog food at her yeah. veterinarian, you know. And, yeah. and she starts sweating it out. But it's, it's just so, just like, because otherwise I would have had the veterinarian to deliver the food to my house and it's just it's so nice just to be able to hop in the car now it's just a whole new freedom so it, it's, it's kind of mind-boggling yeah you know being this old because I was 58 when I got my license so it's kind of mind-boggling so and then with a car you have to um, have repairs and things like that yeah. so my first repair was I had to get a starter for it you know so anyway <laughs> Are you slowly learning about cars and how they work and all that stuff? You know, I had a father and brothers who worked on the cars because mm -hmm. the cars were so different back then. Um, and it was like, you know, it was like one weekend my brother, the transmission went out of the car mm -hmm. and they had to tow it back to Stillwater and they had to drop the transmission and put a you know, new one in. So it was like, you know. <laughs> now changing oil... No. Yeah. <laughs> That's, but, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's just, it It was so funny because it's like I'd watch my brothers, my dad get out there, but my brothers knew how to do things. Mm -hmm. So, but now with the cars like they are nowadays, you know, right. it's a whole different ball game. And how did you get around before you could drive? Um, my brother, you know, my father passed away in 99, then my brother said, you know, he would, whatever I need to go or do, you know, he'd take me in. And eventually he got sick, and then eventually, I mean, he passed away. And so, you know, I mean, if he couldn't take me or I would, like, if I needed to go to Walmart, I live close enough to the Walmart Perkins Road, I'd just hustle out there and just get some groceries and lug them home. And it's so different now, just putting them in the car and just, you know. So if it was something within... Um, like a mile or two, whatever. I could usually walk it. So. Mm -hmm. And your brother drove you around, and then he left you the car. Right, right. Um, it was one of those things that um, he, when he passed, um, he owed me some money. So the car was a payback. So, and I. You know, the car has a, a name. We call it the Putt Putt. And oh. so anyway, it's a good little car. Is there is there a story behind that? Does it make that noise? The goats? <laughs> I don't know why my brother named it the Putt Putt because I guess it's it's not it's a smaller car, mm -hmm. but he's like, 
one day he's like, well, I'm going to be over in the putt putt. Like, okay. <laughs> so, and my father named, we had a station wagon and he named her Liz because she was a black station wagon. I guess he made him think of Liz Taylor. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he came up with that name. So, anyway. All right, so you mentioned that you, like, how, how you like to relax. But what do you like to do in your free time? Do you have any hobbies? You know, I'm, again, I like to walk. Yeah. And there's a story behind yeah. I like to walk and look for change. I mean, cool. it's not one of those things that it's like, I'm going to go look for change. It's right. like, I'm just going to go, you know, walk, because it's mainly for exercise. And then the change started kind of coming into play. So, yeah, so... My dog likes to look for food. What kind of dog do you have? She's um, she's a pound puppy, oh. and I rescued her. And she's a Chihuahua Terrier, and uh, she looks like a Chihuahua, but she's bigger. Mm -hmm. She's taller and everything. So, um, but I'm, I adopted her four years ago, and she was four years old. Mm -hmm. So, and she's just she's a great little dog. She's very happy, always no. happy. She loves people, so she feeds off their willing to pet her and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So she's a good, good girl. She's yeah. a good dog. So I'm a dog person too. I love dogs. Yeah. <laughs> and you said you pick up change. Do you pick up pennies too? Oh yes, everything yeah. that yes. <laughs> My mom said one time. She said, "Your back's gonna go out sometime. You'll be picking up pennies." <laughs> 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 and I um. I store it away. I don't spend it. I store it. Mm. So sometimes you find old pennies, you know, or find some old change. So that's kind of nice. Sometimes you find jewelry. Okay. So you know, hey. <laughs> and is there anything else you wanted to add that we haven't covered? You know, it, this has been very, very. It's been nice. Oh, it's, good. It's been very comfortable, relaxing. Talking to you, you've made it fun. <laughs> So. <laughs> and that's on the transcript forever now. <laughs> Good. So. <laughs> Good. Now, you've been a joy to work with. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, I do. I do have one more question. Okay. Uh, and what advice would you give to someone who's just starting out and they want to go to beauty school or they want to have their own salon? If they want to, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of hours standing up. You know, um, you have to sit there and, and if you have family, you have to know when to cut it off because mm -hmm. if you've got kids in school you need to go to their functions I'm single um, but you know you you got to balance home life and work you know and, you know it's like I'm single so it's like you know I can stay longer you know and you know if you want to stay and work and make money that's great you know if you've got a child's function you know you need to do that because mm -hmm. they do grow up and they will, they will remember that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you can take off and go to their functions, then do it. But it is a lot of work, and it's hard, and it's it's hard on the body, but it's it's rewarding. Because mm -hmm. meeting all the different students I've met through the years, I wouldn't trade for anything. All right, well, thank you so much for, thank you. for sitting down with me today. Thank Thanks. you.